This encounter took place late summer. Um, all the trees were full of foliage. It's very thick. Even though this stand of forest is very thin, uh, it's very well tread. It's right next to uh, a lot of houses. But also on the other side, it's just pure wilderness, farmers, land. It's a small town farther down the road. But uh, for the most part, on the east of this area, which would be that way, it's pure forest, a few houses. That's about it. Um, I came here at night, late summer, it was about 9 o'clock, there was still a ton of kids in a small park over in this area, might be able to see it, yeah, just past those trees, but I made it into this little area. Let's say about 20 meters. And uh, it was pitch dark. There was a lot of foliage. Couldn't see anything. I had a small flashlight. And going into any forested area, I kept a small pocket knife. And I had them both ready. And 20 meters in, right about exactly where I'm pointing my phone. Um, Something moved in the bush and said, help. But when it said help, it wasn't human. It was uh, a watery voice, like it had water in its throat. It was like, <laughs> and it was above my head, so it was big. Um, I'm thinking, it might have been like something like a rake creature, maybe like a fucking crawler, maybe even a young wendigo or something like that. But that set off alarm bells, and for maybe like five seconds, I unsheathed my pocket knife. Uh, Flicked it open, had my little small, not very powerful flashlight, and for a second I wanted to see what it was, and then I lost my nerve, and I walked straight back out of the path <laughs> after saying, I'm sorry I can't help, I'm sorry I can't do this. <coughs> uh, big strong me back in the day. Well three or four years ago. I still had the re residual strength of being a big strong guy when I was younger, working construction. Still on me. But, yeah. So that goes to show, I don't know. Not everything wants to eat you, it just might want help. For context though, this is uh, right next to a residential area, a very dense one in eastern Ottawa. There's a park right there. There's houses packed for the, as far as you can see over there. But, on this side, it's all farmers' fields, wilderness, small town, way, way over there, maybe 10 kilometers away. Um, I used to trek that almost every single day on rollerblades or walking, jogging when I was younger. Um, but yeah. 
you know, people talk about seeing stuff, you know, right on the outskirts of uh, condensed populated areas. You know what? That's where most of these sightings, sightings take uh, take place. Right where humanity stops and the wilderness begins. And a lot of these backyards of people that live in the country. Yeah. It's a lot of where the video gets caught of uh, these creatures on highways and stuff like that. But in this area, sadly I, uh, I didn't actually stop. I was too scared. I was chicken shit to actually see what the creature wanted. I think help might have been the only uh, thing in his vocabulary from the English language. They probably learned that from somebody running away from it, screaming help. To begin with. And I, I didn't do much better. I just said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I fucking hot-footed it out of there. Walking, of course, because I'm a smoker. But, yeah. This is not a very big patch of forest. Over here is a school with a big field, a whole bunch of fields actually, soccer fields, football fields, whatnot. On the other side, at the time of my encounter, it would have been a, a big corn field, with the corn about 10 feet tall, nice and ripe, nice to go through, and not be seen. At the very end of this, a uh, little strip of forest here. There's usually a field in the late summer. It would be about six foot tall grass. So yeah, if something wanted to to come here, I guess looking for help, um, it wouldn't uh, have that much of a problem getting here without being seen. There's a whole ravine system. In the last video I showed, I was actually in that same ravine, just maybe down the way, about a kilometer and a half, maybe, maybe two. It's not that far. Using sidewalks and stuff, takes me 15 minutes to walk. If I was rollerblading, it would take me about 10. Well, 15, 20 walk I guess but yeah I'm certain it was a it was a crawler or a rake type creature they're tall humanoid white bodies hairless But from my experience, um, they use water bodies and just stick to the uh, the wilder places to trek from point A to point B for whatever reason, looking for food, whatnot. Yeah. yeah, you never know what you find out here. I've seen so many things. A lot of them might be the same creatures, the same species. <coughs> but as a, as I was saying, like uh, you know, it takes a lot of nerve to try to get a video of these things. 
you can't stick around when you know something's next to you and can reach out and grab you and fucking do whatever they want. Because obviously, they're bigger than us. For the most part. And they're made to hunt and kill whatever they need to eat. I'm sure they forage as well. But with the uh, degradation of the forest, which this place used to be pure forest, before the farmers moved in, cleared out all the land. It's probably full of them. Before they had to move farther and farther away from all of our settlements, our roads. And now we're just sprawling away, taking more and more wilderness, polluting the waterways. So it's harder and harder for them to survive, I'm sure. Uh, that's sad. Hopefully humanity figures out a way to uh, be less detrimental to the environment around it. I've got a few ideas. I'm sure tons of other people do too. But, <coughs> you know, money talks. <coughs> and uh, if you try to push the save the planet thing a little too hard, you might get assassinated. <laughs> As I'm sure other people have. Like the guy that uh, could run vehicles off of water. You know, heard a blip of a story of a guy that made an engine that could run off of water. It was pretty much a hydrogen engine. Run his vehicle. And the guy got killed. So, you know, you got all these greedy fucks with big business that don't want the status quo to change. They'll be gunning for you if you want to, you know, change the world. something they don't recognize. Um, yeah, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching it. Hopefully it gets more than two views. And I'll be sure to upload another one. Regardless of how many views. We all start small. We all have to start somewhere. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care of each other. Don't let people take advantage of you. Be aware that there's many that will for almost nothing. And, uh, yep. Yeah. See you next time. This is a little water retention pond. It's very, very dirty. It's lots of junk that's been thrown into here. You can tell the water itself is 
Not exactly pristine, just by the ice formation on top. It's bordered by a school behind me and a farmer's field on the other side. And there's a little park over in this direction in a bus terminal. There's a bunch of houses way off in the distance. Not too far. And past that, there's a little path that goes through the small wood here. A pretty thin tree line. And it goes off into a field. Eventually you'll hit a road, but there's a little ravine which connects to the ravine in my first video. It's all the same system. This is up the road about maybe a kilometer, a 20 minute walk. So this is the field I'm talking about. This is the small strand of trees slash little forest. Over here, there is a play structure. Past the soccer field slash football field. I'm not even sure if I'm taking a good picture of it because it's so bright outside. Can't even see the screen. This is the uh, school I was talking about. This is the field adjacent to the set of trees I was talking about, which is pretty thick in the summer. Tall grass, lots of little trees connecting it. It's pretty easy to traverse if you're a cryptid looking for help. Um, but it's pretty shocking, you know. There's houses way over there along the ravine. A lot of them. There's a lot of houses over there. They're building new ones every day. Um, but over here, it's pretty much country. There's lots of roads, but not many houses. Uh, they follow the roads. Some of them are uh, here and there. So, they come in, they come in as far as they can get without going through uh, suburban areas, but in some cases I'm sure, especially if they have wings and shit, or they can fucking fly without uh, needing wings, that, I don't think that bothers them very much, they'll still move right through. Alrighty, good video.